It hit me at the age of five. I was walking, walking home from kindergarten and passing a soccer field where all the kids were playing soccer. So I stopped there in really joyful anticipation of them to invite me to join their playing. And they did stop. And there was an awkward silence. And then the first one shouted, little nigger. And then the second one joined in and said, little nigger. And then everyone else there was standing there and shouting, little nigger. I did not really get that at that very moment. But I felt that something was terribly wrong. And it hurt. So I ran home to tell my parents. But I somehow knew this experience would not be the last one of its kind in my life. 20 years later, in my early years as a young professional in a consulting company, mostly white, male dominant, I was there, and again, I was different than anyone else there. I was young, unexperienced, and on top of that, a woman. And I remember for the very first time that I was invited to one of the senior meetings, and I was going into that conference room, obviously I was there very early, and then all of the guys came in. And most of them, unknown to me. So they greeted, most of them only greeted each other, some of them greeted me. And then they sat down at the conference table, and then the last one came in, he looked at me and said, hey young lady, I'd like to have my coffee with milk, please. <laughs> so those moments of exclusion seem to be crushing at a first glance, but they are priceless at a second glance. I would not be neither who I am today, nor where I am today without those experiences. In most of the things that I'm doing, I'm one of the very few women. I'm a mother, I'm not exactly white, and I'm on the management board of one of the largest corporations in the world. So, what is that telling me? Being different can having an advantage. And I'm not talking about gender or the color of your skin. I'm talking about standing out for whatever reason, and we all know that. Having red hair, being fat, or being skinny, or being the nerd in class. But the one point that I want to share with you is being different does not make you a victim. Being different teaches you quite a lot of things that are going to be an asset in that complexity of world that we are running our businesses today. So why is that? We are all operating in global businesses all across the world. Different cultures, different languages, different time zones, different societies. And there lies a huge potential for collective intelligence with all of those people. But there also is a huge potential of conflict, of making those people work together. And this is where leadership comes into the picture. Leaders need to manage that diverse workforce. And they need to understand them and orchestrate them and let them work together in a way that they become successful as teams. And I strongly believe that leaders that have felt to be different and that have made these experiences will excel in that world of complexity. And that is mainly for three arguments. And here comes the first. Being different leads you to being able to look beyond the obvious. When you're different, you're very often an outsider at first. So you look at groups and at constellations, and you are not in there, so you see things that many others don't see. And you need to look at those and realize what is happening around there in order to really understand what is happening there. But most of the people only look at the obvious. In my case, that's the color of my skin or the fact that I'm a woman. And people don't even realize that they're doing that. So how often have I heard that after I have been involved in a conversation with someone? Oh, you speak so well German, not even the slightest accent. Or how long have you been living in our country? Well, 
I'm born and raised here just like you. Or why is it that if there is a woman in a conference room, people always think that she must be the assistant or bringing the coffee, and she couldn't be the boss? At least I have to tell you, that part does not happen anymore. <laughs> so, I desperately wanted to avoid the mistakes that others were always doing when they were looking at me and only thinking about the obvious. So I learned to look beyond that. I learned to look beyond the conventional wisdom because I did not want to misinterpret what the world really thinks. I wanted to know what is really going on. And this is also my recommendation to you. Try to leave your normality and try to find out what is happening there around there because that makes you definitely much stronger in leading people. Also, being different is making it sometimes much more difficult to earn your seat at the table. And you will actually find out that nothing in life comes easy and that you need to go a really long way till you get there where you want to do. And that's not always easy. And this is my second lesson. Being different requires fighting harder. When you're different, that means that you have to articulate what you would actually like to achieve. This also means that you have to make your point. And from early on, I was lucky because my parents forced me to really think and reflect about the things that I wanted to say. So we always had our Sunday afternoon sessions where we got together and we were talking about whatever. It could be politics, it could be science, a new trend or something personal. And the reality was that very often my parents shared one opinion from their parental perspective. And I was there left alone in the opposition or let me say in the minority. So I remember I was 15 and I had a dream. I wanted to travel Europe with my backpack. Remember Interrail? That's what I wanted to do. So I was totally excited and I thought, okay, I need to make money. So what can you do when you're 15 years old? And the only thing that I could actually do as a job in my vacation was to work in the kitchen of the elderly home in the neighborhood. So I brought that idea forward, totally excited, as this would be a best idea. And then my parents looked at me and didn't like it at all. Because they thought the best benefit for me to be good in school would be to study all of my vacation. Obviously, that was not what I wanted, right? Heydays of puberty, so I was screaming and fighting and there were banging doors. Eventually, I found myself crying in my room, not having succeeded anything. So I thought, I need to reflect on my line of arguments and go back to the table. So I did. And I told my parents that the best and the biggest benefit for me and for school was to work exactly in that kitchen because the chef was French, so this would be a true language partnership. <laughs> and it worked. So what did it teach me? There is nothing wrong about having conflicting arguments. There is nothing wrong about fighting and discussing and sharing different viewpoints and opinions. But it also taught me that you need to fight for your opinion and that you need to fight if you want to achieve that. And I often compare that with sports and the top guys. Does any one of you really believe that you can win the world championship if there is not a lot of pain? I mean, not even participate at the world championship. There is pain, there is a long way to go, there is pushback, there is failure, it hurts, and there is doubt. And leadership is not so much different. If you want to achieve things, you need to be ready to take the pain. And sometimes it also means that you need to be ready to have a thick skin. But I'm not telling you that you should actually bang your head against the wall. No, what you need to do is to understand the rule of the game, to understand the language of the group. Because only if you speak the language can you convince those people and make it happen. And this is my next advice. 
Learn to adapt to different people. Adapting to people means that you need to understand what is the group doing, what is the dynamics. And again, as an outsider, you have plenty of time to look at that. And learning also how could it be that I become a member of that group and also be accepted. And this is what I did, and this is also what I learned, because my parents were sending me out of the country very early. So I went on exchange programs into different countries. I lived with different families, different habits, different rhythms, and it was not always easy. I was crying very often. At night, I fell asleep, and the next morning, it went slightly better. But then the next morning, it went better again. And eventually, I started to love those adventures. Because what happened is, I knew that if I could manage the next day, the next day, and the next day, eventually, from an outsider, I would become a part of the community. And it went even that far that when it was time to say goodbye with my French family, they wanted to give me a very special treat. So we went to a super posh restaurant. And my guest father, guess what he ordered? Frog legs. And they were all looking with me in excitement because this is the best one thing that you can do in France. So I did not want to disappoint them. And I polished my plate. And I didn't tell anyone how disgusted I was. <laughs> so what did it teach me? You need to hang in there. Even though you feel lonely, even though you feel lost, even though it hurts, if you really want to hang, in there, and if you really want to make the point, you need to stay and fight for that. And this is what I learned, adapting to people. And it has helped me quite a lot in my career in different jobs. Because talking to different people and allowing them to give their input is actually the best that you can do as a leader today. And this is what you need to do if you want to manage a global organization. Listen to people, appreciate their feedback, because groundbreaking innovations and groundbreaking work is not done in hierarchies. It's only done when you work horizontally and when you involve your networks. And believe me, I've been doing that job for more than 20 years, and I've seen people growing in leaders, and I've seen those failing and those succeeding. And this is really what makes the difference. So learn to step out of your conventional wisdom Try to understand people, appreciate and harness, and make them be heard. So in a nutshell, if we talk about leadership, there is times when you really need to fight for it. There's times when it is really harder. But what being different also teaches you, that you can make a difference because by being different, and that's really what I learned, when you say something clever and when you stand out, people will remember your face and they will remember your name. So you need to cultivate your difference and you need to take advantage of that and not shy away. And I'm addressing that not only to those of you that have made the same or a similar experience, but to those of you that haven't that believe to be part of the insiders. I can only encourage you to get out there and seek how exclusion feels. Because what you can learn from that is priceless. It's gonna be something where you learn to absolutely look beyond the obvious, fight harder, and also trying to adapt to different people. So dare to be different, for only then you will make a true difference. Thank you.